This audio is rated PG thirteen. Children of Luna, my people, you have let Eden burn. You have brought war to us, shattered our beautiful city into splinters, and it is I who must restore it, even if it means soaking the streets in blood. Think my methods cruel, if you must. Think me an unfeeling monster. Think whatever you want. I know the truth. What I do, I do for the sake of mankind's perfection. And when we are ascended, when we become the masters of all things, you will look back on this day and wonder why you ever doubted. Explosions. The nitroglycerin and their pyro packs were all setting off. That chain reaction, you mean? Yeah. Makes sense. Is he strong enough to set off? I. I don't know. Wait. How long have we been out here? I, I don't know. The fighting's still going on from the sounds of it. No way to tell how long we've been out here. We tell time from the artificial light, so we could have been out there for days for all we know. It wasn't days, more like four hours actually. Still, I was quite worried, I must say. Oh, you again. Me again. Hopefully my assistance means you'll be slightly less hostile. Oh, go to hell. Or not. Thanks for the help. Ah, see? There's a man with manners. If I were you, I'd hasten to my destination. There should be an emergency maintenance tram about half a mile away from the streets. Probably untouched. How can we trust you? Have I not pulled your respective posteriors out of the metaphorical fire numerous times? A little faith might be nice after that. 
Flesh is fallible. Steel is strong. My, that does get irritating. Well, will you trust my information or not? <sighs> All right. We've got nothing to lose. Carter, Andrea, we really don't have a choice. Then I suppose we must all count ourselves fortunate that the fate of the world does not rest on what you like, Miss Dawson. One question. When I heard you, right before I killed that first suited man, was that real? Now, that would be telling, wouldn't it? Oh, I really hate him. I'm not sure I like him either. But we have to trust that he's at least trying to help us. Yeah. The question is, is he doing it to help us or to help himself? What does he have to gain? I don't know. That's what worries me. Come on. Let's find that maintenance tram. Have you got that heated weapon still? Yeah, I've got them. There's a bunch scattered around. Good. Pass me one. I feel like we need them even more once we're there. Attention, people of Luna. We have a message from Dr. Sampson. The leader of Homo Eterna has been captured. Oh, Thames. <laughs> oh, this isn't the end of it. You metal king bastard. My people will the fight human harder. animal's tenaciousness is already known, Mr. Thames. This action is not meant as a deterrent to their morale, but as a statement of intention regarding their fate. People of Luna who follow the flawed Homo Eternia group consider the following broadcast to be information concerning your eventual fate and consider the implications. Go to hell, you gearhead bastard. No, no. Concludes this broadcast. Have a pleasant day. <laughs> I am gonna kill that metal bastard. I think I agree with you. Poor Thames. He was right, though. His death won't stop Homo Eternia. It'll make them worse. Without him to hold them back, they'll... They'll tear the city apart. Just like you said, maybe it needed it. Come on. This is a bit sparse. I think it's because it's made for the maintenance workers, not for anyone else. I guess they didn't really think it needed to be nice. Yeah. You're tired. I think we could both do with some sleep. I mean, it's not every day you get caught out in the middle of a revolution and find yourself fighting boogeyman who's speaking rhymes. <laughs> you make it sound like such an adventure. Well, yeah. But... If this was an adventure, there'd be less crazy metal people, and I'd have... Uh, yeah, well, I guess it isn't an adventure, is it? You'd have... what? It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're probably right. Anyway, sleep might be a good idea. Right, um, I'll... Set this bastard off, and then we can get some shut eye. <laughs> right. Good night, I guess. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Miss Sylvia Carter? Come on. You don't even know why you're here. What's the pity, really? If you could only remember. The question being, would remembering bring you comfort? Or would it perhaps give you more pain than forgetting it? What is this? Control to Carter. Control to Carter. Respond, please. Uh, uh, Carter here. 
double check your course, Commander. Were you readers being off course? But I'm on course. According to our readings, you are dangerously close to living in a quarantine zone. I'm not off course. Uh, you're breaking up, Commander. Repeat, last I'm message. I'm not off course. Carter, Carter, what's happening? This is where I was meant to be. Where I was always meant to be. Would memory serve you or condemn you? If the latter, could you live with that condemnation? And if the former, to what end would it serve you? Would it be an end you wanted? Or would it be an end you did not desire? Or some end unforeseen, unpredicted, unknown, amongst the myriad possibilities of reality? Carter? Carter? Sylvia! Therein lies a question. Do you come seeking answers? Or do you come seeking something else entirely? Wake up, Sylvie! Sylvia, wake up! <sighs> what? Oh, good. You're awake. What happened? You were having a nightmare. Tossing and turning. I... I don't remember what I was dreaming. Whatever it was, it didn't seem at all pleasant. You okay? Yeah, just a bad dream, I guess. I woke you up to tell you. We're nearly at the government office station. I... Right. Let's just get this over with. So, this is it. The government office. The centre of power in the city. <laughs> Looks impressive. I'll give it that. Sir, how do you want to play this? Hmm. Front door is too obvious. If there's anyone still there, that's where they'll be. Oh, there shouldn't be anyone. Just like the suited men shouldn't have existed? <laughs> Point made. Just out of interest. Are there any other boogeyman tales I should know about? Uh, I don't remember. It's been so long since I was a child, and most of those tales are ridiculous legends anyway. Right. Then, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Come on. We'll find a back way. Here. It's the back entrance. Good. I'll go in first and give you the all clear. Right. It looks clear. Come in. Damn, it's dark. Have you got a match? No. I do. <gasps> Jesus! Do you have to keep doing that? I don't have to, but I find it very funny. Your reactions are just priceless. <clears throat> What do you want this time? Giving a friendly warning while I'm in the neighbourhood, so to speak. As you know, Dr. Samson wasn't lying when he said that there was more guarding this place than guards. We met the sooted man. Don't think they were the last of his arsenal. Be careful. Ouch. Where'd he go? Oh, best not to worry about that. I'm more worried about what he said. It could just be more suited men. I could, but... But I'm thinking... Worse than suited men? Anything's possible. Come on. What's that yelling about, do you reckon? I don't know. And frankly, I don't think I want to. <laughs> uh, 
What's that? I don't know. Quickly, hide in there. Is one of Samson's experiments. Oh, it's, it's sick. I mean, what possible reason could it have to strip flesh off someone? Not all of it. Head, hands, feet, all still there. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Oh. How are these things even alive? I don't know. I think it's better off dead. And what's that? Do we want to know? I do. Christ, Carter. Uh, these things are still people. Andrea, wait. Damn it, wait for me. Andrea? In here. Andrea? Andrea? Oh my god. More of these things. What are they? Automations. <coughs> and what's that? This is. Alive. This is the glorious ascension we were promised. I knew it. I volunteered. You. You volunteered for this? This was my duty. This is another step on the road to freeing me from the weakness of the. Flesh. Andrea, come on, let's go. This is this is sick. Let's go. You, you are the ones that Dr. Samson wanted. Let's go, Andrea. You won't escape. Not from the sooted men, and not from the still bones, not from us! Oh my god! More of those things, and oh Jesus Christ! Did they say there would be more sooted men? I'm sorry! Andrea, come on! Run. Just keep going. I wasn't planning on stopping. Suit man. Stand back. Elvir, at the end of the corridor, move! Go in! Escape! You can't escape perfection! Close it! Close it! Close it! Close it! Close it. Everything! Shut! Oh. Oh. oh, thank God. What? 
floor did you pick? Top floor. Yeah. I assume that's where Samson would be. Good call. Still, it still burns. Another boogeyman story? No, no. I know. I've never heard that name. Is that good or bad? Bad. What the hell was Samson doing here? Whatever it was, we'll stop him. <laughs> yeah. Attention all security forces, seekers and executioners. We have two intruders in the complex, now on top floor. They threaten our work. Converge on the top floor and destroy them. Repeat, converge on the top floor and destroy them. I guess we're here. Guess we are. Come on. What's that? Sounds like a... Sounds like a woman. Come on. Wait. It could be a trap. A stillborn or... Something worse. Keep your pistol ready. Fine. Well, let's be careful. Yeah? Sicaria, why? Why this? Why like this? The things we've done, we've done. Did I do this or, or was it just you? Or did I help? Did I help? Did I do this or did you? Sicaria, Why did you do this, Sicaria? Why couldn't we be happy? What did I do that turned you into this? Or were you always this? And I just couldn't see. Why? 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 Um, miss? Hello? Excuse us. Miss? Zakaria? Zakaria, why this? Why this? Why? I, I... Why did I help you? Was I blind? Was I blind? I must have been. Oh, I... I couldn't see what he was. What he planned. What he wanted. I don't Zakaria. think she can hear us. Why? why no. Why like this? I thing guess thing not. You've done. Did I do this? Did Look I over here. What did I help? Did I what help? is it? Did you? Audio logs. Audio what? <laughs> you don't have audio logs on Earth. Why can we be happy? What did no. I do that turned you into this? <laughs> or were you always this? Just <sighs> They're all the rage among the rich people around here. Do you know how to work it? Why? Well, maybe we'll be able to find some evidence of Samson's plans. Zakaria? Zakaria, why this? Why this? Hang on. Why? I... I... Why did I help you? Was I blind? Was I blind? I must have been. Oh, I, I can see what he was, what he planned, what he wanted. 3rd of November, 1897. This is from before the Lunar Project. No wonder it sounds so old. Keep playing. The Earth Authority has agreed to listen to a scientific proposal from myself and Annabelle. Now all that remains is the choice of whether to put our effort into Annabelle's idea or mine. Since both ideas have equal scientific merit and we cannot convince the other, we're leaving it to a toss of a coin. Part of me is a little worried about leaving such an important decision in the hands of fate, but part of me feels it could be no other way. In any event, I know in my heart that what the two of us do together will change the world. Find another one. Why did I help you? Was I blind? Was I blind? Second of March, 1902. The continued prosperity of Luna has, as I expected, been well received by the Earth Authority, who are expanding our funds. Due to some noticeable health issues beginning to develop among members of the populace, low birth weight, Increased cases of albinism compared to species average. I have begun initial researches into cybernetic augmentation. Initial results seem promising. That's how it started. 
He was making ill people better. That's why most people accepted the augmentations. But it changed. He changed! He changed! He changed! He changed! He did terrible things, terrible things! He became obsessed with the machines, with how perfect he thought they were, with how it would all be better once we were all metal and rivets instead of heart and soul. Zakaria! Here, look. August the 12th, 1906. The machines improve everything they are used for. The common laborer can install muscle-enhancing pistons. The librarian can have additional memory space. The surgeon can have steadier hands and move as fast as thought. This cannot be the limit of the potential of the machine. If it has already improved the basic human shape more in four years than it has in four millennia, what might it do in, right, ten, twenty? It is clear to me now that my duty is to pursue this line of thought aggressively. For how can I stand by and watch humanity struggle when it is within my power to make us stronger? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Pardon? What he did. He did because he wanted to help. How did it go wrong? Singularity, singularity, a cursed singularity, the ultimate rise and the ultimate fall. <sighs> Calm down, miss. Wait, singularity. There's a recording marked singularity here. Play it. <sighs> Hang on. <sighs> Dr. Drew Sampson recording, June 18th, 1934. Topic, singularity. Its meaning and methods of achieving it. Singularity. The concept, in its base meaning, refers to technological superintelligence, its eventual inevitable creation. However, I have looked beyond this meaning to see how it may be reached through my research. A single human may never reach the level of superintelligence, but two humans combined may begin to reach that level. If two combined may begin the journey, surely three may go further, and four further still. But why limit to paltry numbers? What of four million, or even four billion? Combine that brain power together, and what may you see? If I am correct, it may be that a combination of all the minds of humanity may well create singularity. A true, super-intelligent, unstoppable, omniscient, the ultimate fate of humanity. Many will not approve. Annabelle will not approve. But Annabelle has not approved of anything I have done in a long time. Why should this be any different? Sicaria! Sicaria! Why did you go down road? Why did you leave me behind? What did I do? <laughs> Look here. A picture. It's Samson. I see this caption. Dr. B. D. Sampson and Dr. A. Meadows at the outset of the Lunar Project. Someone scribbled his face out. Don't want to ever see his damn face again. Don't want to see his face. Never again, never again, never again. <sighs> Annabelle. Sampson's assistant. It's her. You, you're Annabelle, aren't you? He called me Annabelle. Other people called me Anna or Belle or Dr. Meadows, but he called me Annabelle was my name, he said, and... There's no point in having a name if you don't use it. No, 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 no. My nightmares are leaking again. Go away, go away! I'm so sorry, Annabelle. I'm sorry for everything. But I promise you it will end today. Go away, go away. Go away, go we away, best go leave away. Her, I think. The damage was done. But she knows you. Who are you? You're close to Samson's office now. I suggest you go and finish this. But how does she know you? I know you have questions, but there's no time for this. Go! Oh. <sighs> Come on. Oh, don't tell me you still trust him. Of course I don't trust him. But I want answers. Come on! Zakaria! Zakaria! 
Zakaria. Do you hear that? More steel bones. I think they're climbing up the side of the building. We have to hurry. Come on. Here. Office of Dr. Sampson, head of Project Luna. Right. This is it. Are you ready? Do we really have a choice? Here we are. Ah, there you both are. I've been expecting you for some time. Do come in.